basically questioning my integrity. When you think that you know what the right decision is, you have to act on it. What does Willie need to do? He needs to get out of here. I'm Irish. We're stubborn. Wonderful advantage. Not making the playoffs four years in a row. Austin Matthews. Just uh, an error in judgment. I'm not pussyfooting around like some guys. This guy's such an idiot here. All right, Toronto, we are back. Man, it's time for us to continue our franchise mode with your Toronto Maple Leafs, ladies and gentlemen. The start of year number one in preseason. Uh, we, we took a look at the franchise in the last video. I left you guys... Um, with a cliffhanger, what should we do with our roster? Because before we start up the regular season simulation, before we even finish preseason, I think I want to make some trades. In fact, I know I want to make some trades. We are here with all of the uh, Twitch scouts. We just spent a good, what was it, boys, like 30, 40 minutes taking a look at potential trades, going through the roster, doing all the micromanaging so that the fans on YouTube don't have to sit through all that boring shit. So I will be going back to you guys when we need to, all right? But here we are in preseason, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I was going up and down the NHL, taking a look at potential trades, but also going up and down our roster to see what the future holds for the Toronto Maple Leafs, right? Now, it's tough to say this, but the Leafs are still not the best team in the NHL. Nowhere near it. The Tampa Bay Lightning just won the Stanley Cup. And when you look at how that roster is created, not only do they have the stars up front with Stamkos, Kucherov, Hedman, Braden Point, all right, the list goes on, Vasilevsky, they also have the depth. Guys like Yanni Gord, Tyler Johnson, Ryan McDonough, Sergachev. They paid their stars good contracts, which allowed them the flexibility to build up the bottom part of their team. Here in Toronto, we've gone top-heavy with like four forwards, which has left us with little to no flexibility for our depth. Now, when you go back to last year, Dubas made, made a play. He went all-in on the trade with Nazem Kadri going for, where is he? Alexander Kerfoot and Tyson Berry, right? Now, that is an example of mismanaging your assets. The Leafs are not a win-now kind of team. All right, we still need to be building for the future because now, a year later, Kerfoot's on the team, Barry didn't work out, he walks, and we don't have Nazem Kadri anymore. So that's a minus. That's a step back. I don't want to be making mistakes like that, all right? So the potential trade of moving William Nylander, that leaves us with little to no depth in the middle six. Zach, Zach Hyman's not bad. Joe Thornton's not bad for one year. Uh, Wayne Simmons ain't bad for one year. But William Nylander really does bring together that, that middle six. And if we can find somebody to play on the first line, then it starts to look a lot better with that core four on the top six, right? So... Looking up and down the roster, I thought to myself, we need to manage our ass assets. We're still a cup contender, we're just not the favorites. So I have to make sure that every move I make doesn't sacrifice the upcoming seasons. So if we're going to free up cap space, we could do it with William Nylander, but that's going to hurt us this season and in seasons going forward. He could also grow, improving his trade value. So I was going through the forward core, I was going through the defensive core, really not a lot of cap that we can move. And then I looked at our goaltender situation. Harold Bluetooth, Frederick Anderson, all right? He's been four years with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, he's been, it's, he's had a good little career here with Toronto and with Anaheim. But it's come time for the Leafs to decide, do we want to sign him long term or do we want to part ways with him? Now, this is an example of what Dubas did with Kadri, mismanaging. I don't want to mismanage uh, Frederick Anderson. We have a real asset here. And if we want to sign him, he's going to want six years at $6.5 million. Can we afford to pay a goaltender 6.5 when I'm already paying $40 million to four forwards, right? We need to find another young Harold Bluetooth, Frederick Anderson, when he was 26 on a team-friendly contract. We need to go around the league and find someone like that. We can turn... Frederick Anderson into multiple assets and I know it sucks 
but hard decisions need to be made, and that's why I was hired as the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs. So it's my job to turn Harold Bluetooth, Frederick Anderson, into multiple assets for these Toronto Maple Leafs. So I was looking around the league along with the Twitch scouts, and a bunch of teams need a goaltender, but I don't know if there's any uh, more of a need than the Edmonton Oilers, all right? Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, their blue line is getting a little bit better. They signed Tyson Berry in free agency, all right? They just need a goaltender. So... I was trying to figure out what we could get back from these Edmonton Oilers. You take a look at their uh, their goaltender situation, Koskinen and Mike Smith. This team really does need some stud in the net because they're ready to take a shot at it. Their top four, Darnell Nurse, Tyson Berry, Clefbaum, and Larson, looking pretty good. They have an RFA, Ethan Bear, and their forward core with McDavid, Dreisaitl, uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Yamamoto got a little bit better. They just signed Kyle Turris. Uh, they need a good season out of Neil Cassian and Chazon, so the wingers are still very weak over there. Um, but uh, with the studs up front with the blue line, if they could get a goaltender, you never know, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to throw Harold Bluetooth, Frederick Anderson to the Edmonton Oilers. They do want him, so it's a green name, all right? And coming back the other way. First off, we've got to take a roster goaltender to free up the cap space for them. We're not going to take on the Koskinen two-year $4.5 we're going to take on Mike Smith, the veteran, at one year, 1.5. And after we trade for him, we're going to try to reflip him again because we already have Dell Pickle as our backup. Now, I know what you're saying. Johnny, what about the starting position? We'll get to that. I got two trades for you, ladies and gentlemen. So, first up, Mike Smith. Now, the blue line. This is where we need to really get lucky. We have RFAs in Mikheyev. Uh, um, Dermot and Anderson that we need to free up cap space so that we can sign. I don't want to go into the regular seat. I don't even want to simulate any much further because if a team offers them an offer sheet, I can lose them, right? So we want to free up that cap space right now. I got to make this this trade go through right now. I'm not taking any of their top four defensemen. I'm going to take Ethan Bear. RFA, 82 overall, 23 years of age. I can give him whatever contract I'm looking for. If I can sign him long-term, I can get him long-term. If I give him a one-year deal, that works as well. And he's an offensive defenseman. Now, no clue whether or not he's going to work on the power play, which is what I'm getting him for. Remember our power play. Tavares, Nylander, Matthews, Marner. And I threw... Muzzin, Brody, and Riley on that one defensive position, and each one of them only had the plus three. So I thought, get an offensive defenseman. If he works out, that's going to give us that plus five. Don't know if he's going to work out in the five-on-five -five lines. We do not have him scouted just yet. Although, it's not going to hurt us in the long run. Remember what I said about asset management. He's 23, he's medium top four, and even if he doesn't work out on the team... With that 82 overall, he's going to grow. That's why I'm making the decision over Evan Bouchard. Evan Bouchard's the same thing. We don't know what he's all about. But at 78 overall, he's worse than Sandine. He's worse than Liljegren. He could be great for us, but it doesn't help us out this year. Ethan Bear helps us out this year. It's going to help out our power play. And it's going to be an asset for the future for us. All right? So, Ethan Bear. Bang. So we have a backup goalie and a right-handed defenseman, which the Toronto Maple Leafs have been looking for forever. But I want to get multiple assets back here, right? So they also have, they also have, I should say, a forward that they just signed that has done nothing for them. Not McDavid, not Drysaddle, not Nuge, not taking the young Yamamoto, Kyle Turris, no, not taking on any of these crappy contracts. How about the overlooked, overhyped, Jesse Pulju Jaharvi, 78 overall, 22 years of age, still has his low elite potential, but he signed for two years at 1.1750. So even if he doesn't work out, I'll be able to trade him. He's going to be an RFA. And what we're trying to do is find that middle six sniper. All right. So bang, he's going to join the squad as well. And this guy, Tyler Benson, 78 overall, two way forward on a, on a cheap deal. These are the kind of guys that we need to load up on in the bottom six for injuries or just to fill up the roster. He hasn't played for Edmonton at all. He got a chance last year. Uh, only one point in seven games played. All right. And uh, did I not show you Paul Jarvis stats? To show you guys exact, exactly why they would be trading him. Uh, even though they just signed him, they signed him to a crappy contract. In his first year, five points in 28 games played. Uh, 20 points in 65 games played, 9 points in 46, a minus 14. He's done nothing, right? So the idea is that the 
Edmonton Oilers are getting themselves a legit starting goaltender to help them out right now because that's what McDavid and Dreisaitl needs. They need something for right now. Uh, they're not giving up any pieces of their roster. Ethan Bear hasn't been signed. Paul Harvey's not playing with them. Tyler Benson only played seven games last year, and Mike Smith is their backup. So what are they giving up for their playoff run? I'm getting a defenseman, a forward that I'm hoping work out for the future, uh, a depth forward, and then a backup trading asset. And what is it? Only 45 players under contract, so I'd have to send them back another person. Just somebody cheap. Somebody nice and cheap. Agostino? There you go. Yeah, Agostino. And the, yep, okay, so the league has approved it, ladies and gentlemen. So, we quickly go to our Twitch scouts. What do you guys think about the situation? Also, you in the YouTube crowd, I want to make sure that I don't fleece the computers. Uh, they're not giving up any of their roster, and they're getting a stud goaltender that they can sign long term. All right? What do you guys think? Green light? Yeah, this is too much. Johnny shit his pants. Try to ask for a good draft pick back, too. All right, all right. We can, we can negotiate. All right. Uh, so the fans are saying try to get a draft pick back as well. Let's try to get a third back for this year. All right. So the stud goaltender and everyone's saying that the Edmonton Oilers are getting fleeced. You have to look at Frederick Anderson as one of the best goalies in the league. 30, ready to sign long-term, 88 overall. Perfect for what Edmonton needs, all right? We're also trading him to the Western Conference. It's almost like the reverse Cujo trade back in the day. When the Leafs acquired Curtis Joseph from Edmonton, we're now giving them Frederick Anderson. So, will it go through, ladies and gentlemen? No, it will not go through. So, the draft pick is stopping that from going through. Uh, maybe we can get a fourth? Although, the third wasn't too far back. They're pretty similar. Let's see if we can get a fourth. Because I do want as much depth as we can possibly get. Uh, will it go through? Trade rejected. Yeah, so I don't even know if it'll go through with, like, Benson. Because I might have I might have to add the draft pick to be honest. So Anderson, Augustino for a backup, Bear, Pool Jarvi, and Benson. Will it go through? Woo! Just a touch. Alright, just a touch. Just a touch. So I'm the one who's gonna have to add the draft pick. Alright, Edmonton. I will give you a seventh rounder for this season. Will it go through? No. Ooh, still a little bit more. Alright, so they were they were embarrassed by the seventh. Let me go to next year and give you a fourth. Alright? Next year, fourth. How about that? Anderson, Agostino, and a fourth. For all those players, will it go? There it is. Trade accepted, ladies and gentlemen. I am I am happy to accept this proposal on behalf of the Edmonton Oilers, and we consider it a done deal. Dunsky, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get rid of these guys. We're just gonna rip me in the chat. All right, bang, bang. Roster moves now. That, that's another reason why I wanted to make the trades right now is because once waivers kicks in, it's going to be a pain in the ass to make these moves. All right? So don't worry about that for right now. I got to make more roster moves. I got to bring up a goaltender before I can make trades. Hang on. Let's bring up Del Pickle. All right? And in the NHL, I will send down... I got to send down like some forwards. Hang on. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Uh, Korshkov, you go down. No waivers. Dell's coming up. Korshkov is going down. No problems there. Uh, just go best lines for right now, my man. I don't have to worry about a damn thing. And there it is. All right. So take a look at the Edmonton Oilers now, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's a good trade for the Oilers. Like they got to get going right now. They got five and six years left with these two guys. That's gonna. That's gonna. That's gonna go away real quickly. So you can give. Harold Bluetooth, that five, six-year extension, and put them alongside of these two guys. So you got McDavid. All right, let's sort by overall. McDavid, Dreisaitl, Nuge, Nurse, Clefbaum, Barry Larson. They got a blue line. They got the forwards up front. And now they got the goaltender in the net with a backup, Koskinen. All right, so they should make the playoffs with that. What they need to do now is move Koskinen uh, and get, like, a winger. They need, like, a young sniper on that team. But that's not my problem anymore. All right? And we acquired... Uh, now we have Dermot and Ethan Bear. So when you look at... Uh, our blue line here in Toronto. All right, look at this. Riley, Muzzin, Brody, Dermot, Bear, Hall, Sandine, but it's starting to grow. And Dermot and Bear are both 23 years of age. Real nice. So we got to worry about these RFA situations. And how much cap space did I free up? We got like $3 million, $4 million of cap space because of that trade. Beautiful. Now, where does that leave us weak, ladies and gentlemen? Where does that leave us weak? Right there in the net. Our starting goaltender is Aaron Del Pickle, and our backup is Mike Smith. So we need to improve on that. And I was combing through the NHL. The fans were suggesting some uh, some goalies. The Twitch scouts. All right, Mackenzie Blackwood of the New Jersey Devils, but they don't want to give him up, and why would they want to give him up? So I said no to that one. You go to the New York Rangers. They have Shesterkin, who for some reason is high freaking elite. My God. Now he's 24, so he's got to get that jump next season. But Gorgiev, 
You know, 83 overall, 24 years of age, two years. Really interesting. But I'm going for a goaltender that the team actually want to give up. And I can't believe they want to give him up, but I'm listening to the game. Columbus Blue Jackets, Corpus Salo. The man who single-handedly eliminated the Toronto Maple Leafs from the bubble. They want to give him up. Now, they have Elvis Merzlikens. They have two goaltenders who are identical, essentially, all right? So, um, you guys can make the argument that Corpus Allo is the better goalie. I would have taken Elvis, but they want to give up Corpus Allo. So, bang, all right? Yunus Corpus Allo coming back this way, and that's going to be our starting goaltender. So, that's what I mean about asset management. I don't want a goaltender who's 30 making 6.5 signed for six years. I want a goalie who's 26 whose contract's going to come up when he's 27, 28, that I can then sign for six years at like four or five million. You know what I mean? That We got to grow Corpus Allo. That's exactly what we need for this squad. And going back the other way is going to first off be Mike Smith because they need a backup. We need to give up our backup. So they get the backup. We get our starter. All right. But we also have to give them what they need on this team, which is going to be our depth centerman hang on a second alexander kerfoot all right kerfoot now becomes expendable now that we are keeping uh, uh william nylander ladies and gentlemen joe thornton can run it for this year uh malgan is coming up we also have robertson who's a, a playmaker who's coming up in the future all right alexander kerfoot is the guy and when you look at what the columbus blue jackets have right they just traded for max domi now they gotta still sign pierre luc dubois i already took a look at the all the rfas all the rfas are already being offered the contracts they have how much cap space they have like like 12 million dollars of cap space available so do not worry by me giving them curve foot it's not going to hinder their ability to sign dubois but they just signed max domi right now max domi's secondary position is a left wing if i'm columbus i'm going dubois the power forward domi the playmaker and atkinson the sniper all on the first line if they do that their second line sniper is then miku koivu It'd be a lot better if their second-line sniper was uh, Alexander Kerfoot and Koivu was their third-line center, followed up by Boone Jenner and Texier, right? So this team could actually use a playmaker because when you look at their best players, Dubois, power forward, Domi, that playmaker. And if he's their second-line center, then it is redundant, but then they don't have a playmaker to play alongside of Dubois, right? It's sniper, 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 two-way, power forward, two-way, sniper for Grigorenko, but he's down there at 80 overall. Oh, yeah, that's a snipe. It's not even a playmaker. So they do need a playmaker on this team. They want the green name. They want to give him up. But just like the Harold Bluetooth trade, I got to turn this into multiple assets. So we go back to the Columbus Blue Jackets. We take a look at their blue line. What do they got? All right. They got themselves Seth Jones. Now, if I added Seth Jones to this trade, it would be absolutely fantastic. The big-time right-handed defenseman. Top four pairings, all right? I could go out there, and I could I, I could throw in friggin' Timothy Liljegren. We know we could get the value done. The problem is the salary cap situation, all right? Kyle Dubas, dumbass, left me with a very inflexible team. And considering that we are going top-heavy with Marner, Tavares, and Matthews, and now Nylander, there's no way in hell we can get... A defenseman at 5.4 i know boys they would never do it i was just making a suggestion i can't afford it so we're not doing it so the defenseman that i'm going for from the columbus blue jackets it's not going to be their studs they're holding on to their studs all right it's not going to be savard they moved on from ryan murray where did ryan murray go again did he go to new jersey where'd he go shit now that's on my mind i gotta figure that out hang on new jersey hang on hang on just got ah shit no i don't want to discard the chair where'd he go you guys let me know and uh, nj new jersey did he go to new jersey i think he did the, the Twitch scouts will let me know. So they no longer have Ryan Murray on the team. But this guy, Gavrikov, this is the kind of player that we need on this squad. Mid-20s, already in the 80 overall. I don't care about the medium top six. We need guys who are depth, who are nice and cheap, all right? And a defensive defenseman. Could be somebody to play alongside of... Uh, not Ethan Bear, because I, even if he does have the chemistry, I don't think he's going to be good enough to play first line ice time, but say like he works with Morgan Riley on the third line, say he works out with Rasmus Sandin or, 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 uh, not even Brody or Muzzin because they're both left-handed, uh, Timothy Lilligren, there you go. We just need depth. We just need this, this, this young depth on this team. The same thing with this guy, Kukin. The only problem is, like, 1.6. I can't take on that contract. I love the RFAs because you can give them whatever contract you want. And 
Um, even if they don't sign with it, you still have the rights to them. So you can trade them again, right? So there's that one defenseman. Then when I look at their forward core, uh, I had my eyes on Bjorkstrand because Bjorkstrand at 25 years of age, one year left, 2.5, that could be a real nice rental for us. And he fits on the first forward line for Christopher Calico. And that was our old coach, which meant that Matthews and Marner also worked on the first line. So I think this guy is a legit first liner for us. The problem is that he falls into that category where you have to pay him. You know, it's it's not managing your assets because if he has a good year, you're going to have to pay him like four or five million. And we can't afford to do that. So Bjorkstrand with his trade value is overall and his contract situation just doesn't work out. Miku Koivu doesn't work out. The age. Felino, nah. Uh, Boone Jenner works, but 3.7 for a two-way, nah. Grigorenko, ladies and gentlemen, all right? So same thing with Gavrikov. Mikhail Grigorenko, 26 years of age. He's, he's a third liner, all right? 80 overall, but he also has that forward first line of Coleco, which matches Marner and Matthews. And at 26 years of age, at top nine, he's not going to grow too much unless I get good chemistry and I could offer him an easy deal, right? So we'll throw Grigorenko in there. Texier would be beautiful, but look at that trade value. A little bit too much. Dubinsky, I'm not paying that 5.85. And then this guy, Bemstrom as well. Two years at 0.925. Oh, a center sniper though. So I'd probably put him on the right wing. Um, they have plenty of snipers on this team with Bjorkstrand, Nyquist, and Atkinson, right? So, by trading away Kerfoot, we could get our hands on, like, possibly three players that might work for our team, but really, it's the big-time goaltender. It's Jonas Corposalo. Now, this won't work because Toronto would have more than 45 players in the organization. So, can I give them anything cheap? Can I give them anything nice and cheap? Hang on a second. Uh... VC, I want to hold on to VC. We need these guys. I got to sign Anderson. Benson, I just traded for. Got to sign Mikheyev. Got to see what his chemistry is like. I'm going to hold on to Hyman. So, no, we're not trading away any of the guys that they want. What about just all skaters? Can I give up somebody? Like this guy. Two years left. Yeah, you. Trade still won't go through. Toronto would still have more than 45 skaters. All right. Hmm. Bemstrom or Grigorenko? Let me see. Let me just see what their stats look like. Top 9, 21 years of age, 79 overall. Uh, he's a center, though. That's the problem. His first position is a center. Grigorenko is the right wing. I just... Does the secondary position work with the chemistry, or is the primary give you a little bit more? You know? Easily Bemstrom. Well, Bemstrom... Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, value. But I think Bemstrom's value is a little bit higher than uh, Grigor. I'd love to get both of them, though, because they're perfect. Let me see. Can I add, like, another shitty player from my squad? Kosala. There you go. You. Kosala. All right. So technically it'll go through, but I don't know. With, with these three, I don't know. I don't know. So I'd have to add in a draft pick. Uh, let me see the draft pick situation. I'd have to add in like they want draft picks, like a third rounder for next year. So let me look at that situation. Uh, they're getting Kerfoot. Now, why would, why would Columbus do this? All right. So I got to look at this from Columbus's perspective. Columbus would not want to trade away Bemstrom. He's got two years left. He's a young guy. When was he drafted? And four, okay. So we're going to take Bemstrom off the table. Grigorenko makes sense because he's a bust and he's already making 1.2. Gavrikov makes sense because he's an RFA. All right. And Corpusalo makes sense because they want to give him up. Uh, Gavrikov, we have to justify this trade with Gavrikov a little bit. So Mike Smith is the backup, the downgrade. Kerfoot is the upgrade. So Kerfoot and Corpus Allo are the trade. Gavrikov would be better than Mike Smith. Grigorenko is the bust. So the the, the the draft pick is... Yeah, okay, so let me get rid of Casilla. Can I get rid of you as well? No, I'm going to have to give up some player in that. Hang on a second, boys. We're going to get this trade. We're going to make this trade go through. I don't care what I have to do. Uh, see? This is why I pre-scout as well. Um... All right, so we got you signed. Or sorry, we got you on the block. The third rounder. Do you think I need to give up the third for this? All right, so Mike Smith for Grigorenko. That's even. Kerfoot for Corpusalo. That's even. And then Gavrikov for this, so I have to give up something. How much do you think Gavrikov is worth? Because that's realistically the draft pick that I got to give up. An 80 overall, top six defensive, def like a third. It's a third, isn't it? It's not a fourth. It's a third. It's a third. Yeah, it, it is a third. It's not even a fourth. It's a third. All right, so I go to draft picks for next season, a third rounder. Yeah, I have to give up something. All right, so again, to justify the trade, it, the big piece is Corpus Allo. They want to give him up. Our big piece is Kerfoot. Kerfoot signed for another three years, then a year longer than Corpus Allo. So the value there works out. Mike Smith for Grigorenko, that value works out. 
Uh, this guy is just a crappy roster player. Gavrikov is a legit NHL player who can play in the top six, so you got to give them the third rounder. All right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, do I have the green light to go ahead with this trade? We will uh, reference the Twitch scouts on paper. I like it. Um, we're turning essentially Kerfoot and Harold Bluetooth Anderson into Corpus Allo, Gavrikov, Paul Jaharvey, Ethan Bear, and Tyler Benson. So you see what I mean about asset management? Green light, green light. All right, the Twitch scouts have given me the green light, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, will it go through? Yes, it will. Roster move summary. All right, so I'm calling Corpus Allo up to the NHL squad. Oh, and it just went through. Look at that. On behalf of the Columbus Blue Jackets organization, I accept your trade offer. We'll see you out on the ice. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So those were the two big trades. Now, the good thing is that we got these guys signed, but I'm not ready to look at our roster uh, uh, situation just yet, right? Now, look at the cap space we have. We have about $6 million of cap space. Bang. That's what we needed. Now we go to contract situation, right? Now let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Uh, RFA. So we got to get Bear, Dermot, Mikheyev, Gavrikov, and Anderson signed. You see what I did with the $6 million? You see what I did with it? So I'd still, I still would like to possibly go after a free agent. So what do we do here, guys? Do we want to go long term with the... I say with this Leafs team, we got to go year by year until something happens. I go one year. We need as much cap space every single year as possible. And he's an RFA still. I can go three years, keep him as an RFA at three, but I got, no, we got to save as much money. You don't have enough money. Yeah. Yeah. We need as much freaking money as possible. So I'm going down to one year at $1.8 million. All right. Sound good? Two years? Ah, that's all. It's an extra million I got to spend. I don't have the cap space. I have a plan. It's about asset management. He, he stays as an RFA. His assets, his, man, his value goes up. We're doing this. One year, 1.8 for Ethan Bear. All right. Travis Dermott, please want something similar. Okay. So I can go long term with both of these. I'm going to one year, 1.8. You stay as an RFA? Yeah, he's an RFA for another two years as well. So by getting these guys nice and cheap, um, we, we keep the cap space available. We can figure out what their chemistry is. And we still have the potential to trade them over the course of the year or at the trade at the uh, the trade deadline or at the draft. All right, Mikheyev. All right, so Ilya Mikheyev. Yes, we want you back. Oh hell yeah, Mikheyev. Thank you, thank you, my man. Take that team friendly contract. One point two five zero for Mikheyev. Bang. Uh, Gavrikov. All right, let's see what Gavrikov's got. Can we go long term with Gavrikov? Damn. But we don't know yet. We don't know anything about him. So one year works for me. How many years is? Oh shit. So if I go one more year with Gavrikov, he's still an RFA. That's real good. That's real good. So Gavrikov, RFA for one season. So all these guys are RFAs at the end of this year. And then Joey Anderson, uh, two-way. I can go long-term with Joey. Or I can just go, let me go three years at a two-way deal at 900. No, no, let me save money because I might be using him on the team. One year. One year. What do we do with Joey Anderson? Do I go three years with him? Because that's only 200K more. You could maybe get him locked up. Three years, two-way, and 8.5. You don't have the cap space, John? What are you guys saying I don't have the cap space for? Three, you idiot? Three years. Okay, got it. What are you guys saying I don't have the cap space for? I absolutely have the cap space. We have almost $5 million of cap space available. Every time one of these players are signed, they are not going to be put in the NHL squad. They're going to be put in the AHL squad. The AHL salary does not contribute to your NHL salary cap. This is why I'm making these changes in preseason, so that I have the flexibility to make the roster moves before waivers kicks in. Do you understand? Don't worry, boys. You guys, no, 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 the, the chat's not making a mistake. They're trying to help me out. They just don't know. All right, this is why I'm making all these trades now rather than in the season is because the waiver situation would just be horrible. All right, so don't worry about it, boys. Don't worry about it. Uh, we have plenty of cap space. Uh, you don't have cap space for free agents. Well, so be it. These are my, I mean, two defensemen, three defensemen and two forwards. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's the depth that this Toronto Maple Leaf squad needed. And then the goaltenders, RFAs, nobody. All right, so there you go. All right, Corpus Allo in the net, and look how much money we saved on Corpus Allo compared to Harold Bluetooth. All right, very good. Zach Hyman wants the contract extension. I got to wait on him, though. Yeah, I got to wait. I can't, I can't make any contracts for next season just yet. All right, so with those signings, we still have to wait for the guys to get signed. So I'm going to have to simulate a few days here. 
And also, um, hopefully some players don't get picked up in free agency, right? I don't want that to happen. Uh, Merrill for Dermot and a fourth. Decline trade. No thank you. You know what? Let me decline the trade and edit the trading block just so we can get this over. Whoa! They, they increased the trading block. Good job, EA. Instead of three players, I can have five now. That's nice. Always like to see nice changes. Uh, wants. Bam, bam, bam. Very nice. Very good. All right, so that should take care of that. Now, we're just advancing. I think we're also Trenton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're still waiting on our scouts, right? So I hired three scouts from the OHL, WHL, and the QMJHL. Uh, Yves Jiguer, yeah. And there should be, like, one more guy. Is he next? Yeah, he's waiting an extra day. Hang on a second. Kurt McCabe, all right? So our three scouts are back. And now... We're still in preseason, so we have the ability to move around. Vladislav Gavrikov, I was extremely happy to accept your trade offer. I mean, your 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 um contract offer. All right, so Gavrikov is on the team. Ethan Bear is on the team. Ilya Mikheyev is on the team. Joey Anderson is on the team. And Travis Dermott is on the team. Not enough cap space, huh? Not enough cap space, huh? And there it is. GM Superb, man, comes into Toronto and figures out a way to get all the RFAs signed before the season starts. All right, let it be known. I am an absolute genius. All right. So, yeah, so we still have $3.1 million of cap space. All right. That's what the Leafs, that's one of the advantages for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Do you guys remember the trades where we picked up Nathan Horton and David Clarkson? Uh, we paid them, but because they're on injured reserve, they don't to uh, go towards the cap. Um, the Leafs can spend a shit ton of money. We're a very healthy financial squad. It's just about manipulating the rules of the NHL so that certain players don't show up on the cap, right? So here we go. Uh, so I got those guys signed. Now when you look at our squad, all right, Corpus Salo, Aaron Dell, uh, the blue line, uh, Morgan Riley, Jake Muzzin, uh, TJ Brody, Hall, Sandine, Bogosian. Uh, what about in the system now, all right? Ethan Bear, Travis Dermott, and Gavrikov. All right, so let's bring these. Can I bring them up? List. Oh, these are the contract situation. All right, so I gotta, I gotta bring these guys up in the roster. Hang on a sec. Uh, edit lines. Yeah, hang on a second. John, try bringing them up. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll find a way to get them up. Remember, we're still in preseason, so if I need to trade Nylander, I can do it. So our goaltender situation. 2.8 and 0.8 now for Corpus Allo and Del Pickle. Defensemen, Riley, Muzzin, Brody, Hall, Sandine, and Bogosian. All right, so in the system, I'm going to bring these three guys up. All right, and uh, I don't need to see Bogosian. I don't need to see Rasmus Sandine right now. Justin Hall is the one that I want to I want to see what his chemistry is like. We know we're holding on to Sandine. Bogosian's going to be a depth player. Uh, I'm going to need to bring up uh, a forward. So hang on a second. Or send down a forward. Sorry, I got too many players up here. Boyd, you get your ass down there. All right, very good. Cap space, $2.8 million, ladies and gentlemen. I am fine. I don't know what you guys are worried about. I freed up like $8 million. Wait, what are you guys, what are you guys worried about? Talks about asset management, but Fs himself and has to trade Nylanders anyway. I don't, I, how do I F myself? What are you talking about, fools? What are you guys talking about? I got everyone on the team. All right, so let's see what we got here, right? So if we're going Matthews. Tavares and uh, and uh, Marner. First off, can I give Nylander a secondary position as a center? He does. He, he look at his eight faceoff rating, eighty-two percent. He plays center for the Toronto Maple Leafs. It's ridiculous. Like it's not even cheese. He does play center. I'll show you his faceoff rating: fifty percent last year, fifty-five percent the year before that, fifty-one percent. All right. As a rookie, he had, he had a rough go, but he, he's a center. Do it. Yes. All right, you guys let me know if this is cheese or not, but William Nylander is a legitimate, like, center. He does play center all the time. He takes face-offs all the time. Puck move, he's just not a big center. So I'm going to edit player. I'm going to edit this. I don't care if it's cheese. He's a legitimate center. So, William Nylander. He should be a center. Well, he, I think he's a natural winger because it plays to his skills, but I've seen him play center. He's fine at it. Uh... They figured it out. They don't want you cheese in the system, ladies and gentlemen. I should have done it before I started my franchise mode. Sons of bitches. <laughs> all right. All right. So I'm stuck. I'm stuck, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, it's in the game. Man, that's pretty bad. Yeah, you should just have the ability to edit. Like It's like NBA. You have the ability to edit your franchise mode however you want. People say it's cheating. I bought the game. I should... If I don't want to cheat to keep myself in check, then I don't cheat. Like, why are you telling me that I can't cheat? Oh, whatever. 
Anyways, Tavares, Marner, and Matthews, Nylander. Uh, uh, so Nylander goes right there. I could go like Wayne Simmons and then like Zach Hyman. E a little bit low. Uh, Grigorenko, a little bit low. What about like Joe Thornton instead of Nyland? Because he's a winger. That might be hurting it. Yeah. All right. Um, so who do we got scratched? Pool Harvey, Benson, and Gavrikov. I got to figure these guys out. So first off, Grigorenko, where are you? There you are. 26 years of age. All right. So he's not the... Wait a minute. He's not the depth. But if I go... Hang on. Plus three for Grigorenko, Matthews, and Marner. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. I wonder why he's... Is it because Matthews is the sniper? Like two snipers with a playmaker doesn't work? Yeah, it might be two snipers with a play. It's interesting though, because they're all green on that first line. How is it only a plus three? I think it's only a plus three because Grigorenko is only... His, his role is a third line scoring winger. But if I move like... Like if I put Tavares there... There's like another glitch happening here, ladies and gentlemen. I got to point it out. So in the previous game, right, say I selected this player. If I highlighted another player, watch the chemistry on the first line. See how it changes? So if I move Spets to the first line, it's plus. Plus what? Oh, man, it is glitched as hell, man. It's saying that if I move Spets down, it's going to be a plus one. But no, it's a plus three. What? Okay. I don't even know what's what now. It doesn't preview anymore? So, oh, EA, how do you take a step back? All right, all right, relax, relax, relax. He is a plus five. What's happening? I thought, I was like, yeah, if he's all, if they're all max. Huh. So if I move him back. Move back. What in the bloody hell? Hang on, hang on. I, sorry, YouTube mode. Hang on, hang on. YouTube mode, you can have fun looking at the Twitch chat right now because I'm, I'm I'm sidetracked. How the bloody hell? Oh, man, don't swear. Don't swear. Try to find another way to do it. Don't show your lack of intelligence. Grigorenko, Tavares. So what if I switch back up? Maybe it's just because I made the trades. The game didn't, like, update or something? Hmm. We won't know the chemistry. Grigorenko. Nah, I mean, it's definitely plus five. He's maxed out, maxed out, and maxed out. So the original idea of Matthews, Tavares, and Marner on the first line. Let me get rid of this now again because you guys are, uh, we're back. It seems like it's fixed itself. No clue why. New game, new glitch. We'll just put it, to, uh, we'll just chalk it up to that. So Matthews, Tavares, and Marner, right? We could go with that. But now, because Grigorenko could play. Oh, yeah. All right, so Grigor, I guess Matthews and Tavares are different snipers on the first. Even though they're both centers, they're both snipers. No clue. Uh, but Grigorenko can now. We could grow this guy, give him that extension after the 1st of January, right? And that then frees up Tavares for the second line with Nylander. And then what, like a Wayne Simmons for a plus three? No, don't get the plus three. So then it would be, it would be Hyman. So why doesn't this second line get a good jump? Tavares, Tavares doesn't like the second line. Nylander, not really great on the second line. But the thing is, is that their overall numbers are going to be fine. And I'm going to give them power play time. So as long as they're plus, now that's starting to look decent. That's starting to look decent. Then Jumbo Joe Thornton is the third line center. Uh, Spezza, fourth line center. And then I got VC Simmons. I need like another sniper right there. Okay. So let's take Malgin off. Who else did I have on the team? It was, hang on, Tyler Benson and uh, who else? Pull Jarvi, right. Fuck. I want, oh, Pull Jarvi could be our second line sniper. Hyman, wait a minute. That's what I was hoping for. Plus three, plus three, plus three, plus three. Damn it. Pull Jarvi, what are you good at? Hmm. We just found our second line sniper for the future. It's good enough. It's just because Tavares, oh, Mikheyev. Yeah, we'll get to Mikheyev. He's a two-way guy, though. I'm trying to find the playmakers and such. Interesting. 
Okay, so pull Jaharvi over here. No. See, I think it's Tavares. So it's like if I got... Oh, yeah, because they're two snipers. So what if I went like Nylander down the middle and then like Simmons on the wing? Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, we can also say screw it to Grigorenko and turn Nylander into that legit second line center. Get Pull Jaharvi going because he's the legit second line sniper force of the future. And then I just got to find uh, a left wing power forward even better than Wayne Simmons to maybe even get a plus five on that second line. Interesting. Trade JT? No, I can't trade JT. He's got a full no move clause. Can't do it. Going to have to figure out a way to make it work. All right. Well, good news here is that we can run the chemistry or we can just run the Grigorenko build. I like the Grigorenko because we can grow him, turn him into something. Nylander, Tavares, and like Pulja Harvey. Although I do like the idea of getting Pulja Harvey up there in the numbers. Ooh, I don't know what I want to do. Can I get like Wayne Simmons, Pulja Harvey, and Thornton on the third line working? No, can't. All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Now, what about Mikheyev? I got to bring up Mikheyev still. Tyler Benson. Hang on. Let's see where... Oh, fuck. I didn't mean to hit the B button. I did not mean to hit the B button, ladies and gentlemen. Hang on a second. Uh, all right. So, let me get... I got to get Mikheyev up here. But let me just take a look at... Uh, what's his name? Benson. All right. Benson is... Tyler Benson. So, we took a shot on a depth two-way forward. Nothing really special happened in there for Tyler Benson. Uh, Hyman, Gavrikov, and Engvel. Although, Gavrikov. Hang on a second. And Ethan Bear. Shit. Ethan Bear. What do you got? Oh, right. Okay, so I can't look at... Shit. Okay. So, okay. So, the whole pinch he doesn't like. The shoot cycle bias on the second line he does like. What about the third line? Uh, he doesn't like... Uh-oh. What about the first line? Oh! <gasps> He's green, green! Oh my god. So, Mo yes, Morgan Riley's got the plus one now on the first line. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, uh, so what does that do for me? Hang on a second. I had plans. I had plans. Power play now, right? So in the power play, because I have Nylander, Marner, uh, fuck you, Thornton. Sorry. No, don't swear, you freaking plug. Marner, Matthews, Nylander, Tavares, and then, uh, 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 Bear. Shit. Where the hell is he? Bear, 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 bear. What? Oh, left defense. Son of a... Yes! All right. So, good news, bad news. Good news is that we hit Ethan Bear. Bad news is that we should have signed him long term. Right away. <laughs> right away. I didn't know, though, right? So, year one, we might not want to play him on the first line just so he doesn't really jack up there, right? I gotta, like, play him like a shitter, sign him after January 1st, and then play him like a stud. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. What about Pooja Harvey on the power play? No, but he does work on the second line power play, so Ethan Bear is a good one. Okay. Okay. So, the penalty kill now... Because I'm going to have... Oh, ooh, Tyler Benson works on the penalty kill, though. Ah, okay. So I got to look... Okay, th that's the next step. VC works on the penalty kill. I need the two-way forwards that work on the penalty kill. The chemistry for the fourth line ain't great, but I can get the penalty kill going this year. Hyman, you work on the penalty kill? Hyman doesn't work. Ooh, Hyman's becoming expendable. Hyman is becoming expendable. Now, I need Hyman for the middle six chemistry. Hyman is becoming expendable, though, now that he can't... Uh, kill all the penalty because I have all these other two-way forwards now hang on I'm not I'm not gonna trick because he does still have that chemistry in the middle six what about hang on a second what about uh uh, uh Engvall what do you got Engvall kills penalties as well oh I got Benson Engvall see what I mean Hyman's becoming expendable uh Simmons Nylander uh centers Thornton Spets Amalgan left wings so VC Benson Engvall Hyman doesn't okay Mikheyev Right, so I gotta bring up McKayev. All right, so let me let me get McKayev and see what he's all about. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I know a lot of micromanaging, lots of trades. Corpusalo, Riley, gotta bring up uh, what's his name, McKayev, and Joe, oh, and Joey Anderson. Shit. All right, so we're gonna send down. Hmm. Let me send down Maligan. I really don't think we're using Maligan. Let me send down Maligan. Let me send down Hyman just for right now. All right, bring these two guys up. Don't worry about the waivers. We're in preseason. 
Okay. Uh, first up, we'll try McKay. Oh, VC, we already tried. We'll try Mikhaev. Where is he? Uh, where is he? There he is. Ilya Mikhaev, 82 overall. Uh, nothing, but he's a two-way four. What's he got? Okay. So the same thing as a, uh, what's it called? Uh, same thing as a Tyler Benson when it comes to the chemistry. So Zach Hyman has got the chemistry, but what about the penalty kill? Mikhaev. Penalty kill. Uh, Mikhaev. Is he a right winger? Yeah. Oh, I was right on it. He does kill it. Okay. Okay, so the, the two-way four. That's a good penalty killer right there. Fourth line for Mikheyev. That's real good. 82 overall. So, Hyman, man. Hyman might be Gonzo Alonzo. I hate to say it. There's another trading asset for us. Interesting. Okay, so we got that. Now, what about uh, the defenseman? Hang on, hang on. So, Bear works. Muzzin. So, if I go, like, Muzzin on the first line. Oh, hell yes. All right, so I can get my plus three with Ethan Bear Brody. It's just Riley. Yeah, Riley doesn't work on this team makeup. What about Travis Dermott? Travis Dermott likes one on the green, one on the yellow on the third line. One on the green, one on the red on the second line. All right, so Travis Dermott is... Eh. What about on the penalty kill for Travis Dermott, the two-way defender? I got to do that as well, yeah. Okay, hang on. Dermott. Mmm. So Dermott, I think, is expendable. He's not good on the penalty kill. What about Muzzin? Muzzin is good on the penalty kill. Riley, not good. Ethan Bear, not good. What about uh, Dermot? We tried Brody. Are you good on the penalty kill? Brody is good. So Brody, Muzzin, Riley. Dermot is expendable now. And then what about Justin Hall? Hall is not good on the penalty kill. Hall has become expendable. What about uh, shit? Gavrikov, right? We didn't even try Gavrikov out. Gavrikov. He is also not as good, but he's a defensive defenseman, so it makes it better, I think. No, it actually makes it worse. So Gavrikov might... What was Gavrikov's uh, stats defensively? Let's see. Green and yellow on the third. Double greens on the second? Oh, my God. Okay. Gavrikov and Bear, 23 and 24 years of age. Holy shit. Now, the overall isn't up there. And I've got to find a way to get Muzzin and... Br like, I don't want to stunt... If anything, I think year number one, i got to get like Brody going so I don't stunt his growth. Muzzin with Riley on the second. Gavrikov with like... Dermot becomes expendable. I don't even know. I don't even know. Maybe like Justin Hall. But honestly, maybe another offensive defenseman right there. Or another two-way guy for the penalty kill. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Sandine. Oh, yeah. Rasmus Sandine. Shit. Okay, so I'll bring up Rasmus Sandine. See, see what I mean about flexibility? We got so many assets now, ladies and gentlemen. And I know you guys want to see a simulation, but this is all the micromanaging. This is this is the biggest part of the GM mode for the Toronto Maple Leafs. It was year one, preseason. I ain't allowing the same shit that's happened the last four years to happen again. Riley, Muzzin, Brody, Dermot. Okay, so I'm going to send Dermot down. Uh, we're going to send Hall down as well. All right. Uh, Sandine, Bogosian. Let me get Lilligren up here. Let me just see what they're all about. Uh, Gavrikov, Bear. Uh, I'll send a forward down. Hang on a second. Uh, we, know Eng we know what Engvall and VC do. You know what? Oh, we know what McKay. Ah, give me somebody that we don't know. Give me, give me Spezza. Fuck it. There you go, Spezza. Get your ass down there. All right. So edit lines. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, defensively. So I got to go through all of these guys and see who plays well on like the third line and such. So Bogosian, first off, D defensive defenseman. He works on the second. Oh, he also works well with Ethan Bear. Hmm, Bogosian. All right. So I got two of them, Bogosian and Gavrikov. So Bogosian then more than likely won't work on the penalty kill. If because like that's the same as Gavrikov, right? Hang on a sec. Bogosian. Yeah. So Bogosian and Gavrikov are the same kind of player. So we upgraded Bogosian with Gavrikov. That's good. Uh, next up, uh, Timothy Liljegren. Now we're not going to be playing him this year. One green and one yellow on the second. So with Gavrikov, that's really good. Gavrikov and Liljegren can play the third line and get a plus one. Uh, on the second line, he's two yellows. On the third, on the first, there you go. Liljegren and Ethan Bear. Liljegren and TJ Brody. So Liljegren has definitely got a future here with us. Over Morgan Riley, I think. Riley becomes expendable. And uh, on the penalty kill... Oh, he... 
Penalty kill plus three? What the hell? Gavrikov, what? What are you doing up there on the first line center position, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, so the penalty kill is coming with Lilia Grin. I think that's over Morgan Riley. All right, not yet though, not yet. So we're still scratching Morgan Riley. Uh, left defenseman, Rasmus Sandin. Let's see where Sandin works. Doesn't work. Oh, I think Sandin's the same as a Morgan Riley. Let's see, does Riley have red yet? Yeah, Sandin is the same as a Morgan Riley. Okay, so does Sandine kill penalties? Probably not. Sandine might have become expendable. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh. Sandine. Ah, uh, it's not bad because they're two-way defenders who are okay. They can make it work, but they don't get that extra plus. Sandine, Riley have become expendable, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but we still do need that two big two-way defender for the season simulation. All right, all right. So... Go to roster moves. One last, one last uh, change up to the lines. And I know we're going to get two videos in without even making a uh, single day of simulation happen. I'm sorry, boys, but this is, I, I need to hear what you guys have to say. So Riley, Muzzin, Brody, Bear, Gavrikov, Sandine, he can play, so I'll let him play. All right, Bogosian's going to be the seventh defenseman, and Liljegren's going to be sent down. Now, who else do I got in the system? Dermot and Hall. Dermot and Hall all of a sudden become expendable, ladies and gents. All right, I think I could definitely move on from those guys. And there's 1.8 and there's $2 million that we can uh, we can move on from. And then the forward core, let's see, in the NHL, I'm going to bring back up Zach Hyman and uh, Jason Spezza. All right, and we can send down uh, Paul Jaharvi, Anderson, Benson, Engvall, BC, Grigorenko, Simmons, McKayev. I mean, Jesus, we got a lot of them, don't we? Uh, let me send down Jimmy VC for right now. Actually, you know what? Cancel. Let me send down Pierre Engvall, because he's got the 1.250, and I had other two-way forwards who were much cheaper, pretty much doing the exact same thing. So, edit lines, ladies and gentlemen. Best lines. Here's what we got for year number one, and we're going to leave it here for you guys to, again, chime in. What do we do with Mikhail Grigorenko? I'd love to give this guy a chance to grow on the first line, because these are the kind of players that we need if we're going to create a dynasty here in Toronto, all right? We want to get these young players who are on shit contracts playing. And if I get him playing with Matthews and Marner, look at that, plus five. That then frees up the second line for Tavares and Nylander. Now, we have to worry about Nylander and Tavares not getting goals. They will be on the first line power play with Marner and Matthews alongside of Ethan Bear. So all of my top four guys are getting top six ice time. They get line mates to play alongside of. And they're on the first line power play with that plus five. So, don't worry about Tavares and Nylander. They're going to get their points, all right? I was a little worried about stunting Tavares' growth. That won't happen. Now, if Grigorenko doesn't work out, I can always go bam, bam right there. Nylander into the middle. Uh, pull Jaharvi onto the first line or second line right wing and then find a power forward to get that playmaker and bring that second line together. Uh, so, we have options. But the way I see it right now, Tavares, Nylander... Uh, probably like a Wayne Simmons in there, all right, just for the big-time power forward. Uh, actually, you know what? Hyman, because if we're only getting a plus one, let Hyman play. Then uh, Jumbo Joe Thornton with Wayne Simmons, and uh, instead of Jason Spezza, it's going to be Grigorenko. No, 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 sorry, Pool Jaharvi. There it is. Jesse Pool Ju Jaharvi, and I can even move him up one to get a plus three... Simmons, right? Yeah, there it is. There's that Pool Jaharvi plus three if we wanted to get him going. But I believe that just playing him slowly will uh, garner some results if I get him on the power play as well. All right. So Joe Thornton with Simmons and Pool Jaharvi on the third line. And then fourth line, pretty much an all two way forward fourth line, the penalty killers. All right. Joey Anderson, penalty killer. Ilya Mikheyev, penalty killer. Jimmy VC, penalty killer. The only thing is, I would love to, like, replace Zach Hyman with uh, uh, Tyler Benson as a penalty killer, right? Oh, that would be big. And then, what we could do is we could pair Hyman, Dermot, and, like, uh, uh, somebody else, like a first, for a bona fide second-line power forward. Interesting. Very interesting. All right. Defensively, I'd go, because we don't want to grow Ethan Bear yet. Uh, we want to make sure that our top guys get better. So I'd go like Brody with Riley, Muzzin with Bear, and then Gavrikov with Sandine. I don't want it because we got to sign him after January 1st, right? Got to be careful with that. We're going to leave him on the first line power play. Uh, we'll get the second line power play with like Pulja Harvey and Joe Thornton and such. The penalty kill with all those two-way forwards and the defensive defensemen. We should be able to have the plus. And then the goaltender situation with Jonas Corposalo, ladies and gents. 
So that's the squad, the way I see it. In the minors still, I'll show you guys. Oh, 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 okay, just, just let me go back to the minors. In the minors still, we still have Travis Dermott, Justin Hall, Malgin, Engball. So there's like another almost $5 million that we can free up. Make a trade, all right? And what we haven't even done just yet, ladies and gentlemen, is we can go to free agency because of our extra cap space and possibly get, possibly get, uh, uh, one of these guys that could really boost our squad. First off, the goaltender situation. We're fine with our backup being Aaron Dell Pickle, so I'm not going for that. Uh, defenseman, uh, right to, let's just go, def what the hell? That wasn't sorting by the top, whatever. Defenseman, Sammy Vatnin, another offensive defenseman to play alongside of Gavrikov on the third forward, uh, on the third defensive line. Just, we don't know about his chemistry, right? Uh, Dustin Bufflin, two-way defender, uh, a little bit of size, all right? Jay Bomeister. I would love to maybe get Sammy Vatnin. Love to. Although our blue line is looking pretty deep right now, right? So perhaps making a trade for that uh, player. And then the forward core, we got Mike Hoffman. We don't need Hoffman. Uh, we could sign him to like a one-year deal, but like $3 million. Our cap space is $2.8 million. So we do have some flexibility here. Granlund, uh, 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 a center playmaker, no. Kovalchuk, no. I had my eyes on these two playmakers right here, guys. Athanasiu and Alex Galchenyuk. Now, Athanasiu is a lot cheaper. They're both 26 years of age. They both have the same potential. But I'm thinking about the center playmaker to replace Joe Thornton in the upcoming seasons. If William Nylander is playing the first line power play, we're going to need a second line power play center. And it could be Alex Galchenyuk. All right? Don't know about his... Uh, his, uh, what's it called, his stats. It's saying Christopher Coleco's first line, so he could be another first liner for us. But at 26 years of age, he could be an asset that we could then trade. And the same thing with Andreas Athanasiu. Um, the only problem is that with Thornton, like you could put Athanasiu alongside of uh, Tavares or Matthews, but those two guys already have the playmakers in Marner and Nylander, right? So your third line, unless he's a power forward or a center, I'd rather go with the center playmaker, right? So we take a look at Athanasiu's stats, and he doesn't work on the first line for Coleco. So I don't know if that's better or what. I'd love to take a shot at uh, Galchenyuk, to be honest. A nice centerman right there. Young center in to replace Joe Thornton starting next season. Uh, but they also have uh, Dominic Cahoon here as one year younger. Same kind of stats as, uh, what's his name, uh, Athanasiu. So... I like the idea of Galchenyuk there, ladies and gentlemen. I also like the idea of Vatnin, and we have some trading assets. So what do you guys think? Let me know. We can make some more trades before we start up year number one. I know two videos have gone by now. We still haven't got the simulation started, but this was the whole build of the Toronto Maple Leafs, all right? It was about year one, preseason one. I was no longer going to sit back and let the Leafs go to the playoffs and lose in the first round again. Major changes were needed, all right? And all the changes were about asset management. Not going to hurt us starting next year. It's all about the future for these Toronto Maple Leafs, all right? We got four. Four years to win a Stanley Cup, and I've really put us in a good spot here. Freeing up that cap space and giving us depth. So let me know what you guys think, and I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, Johnny here, and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like, hit that subscribe button, and make sure notifications are on so you don't miss out on any new content. We also live stream on Twitch where I take days off my life for your entertainment. Sonny Gray, get out of it. You stupid pieces of shit. I should have gone with Jose for Fernandez. Oh my God. Pitching change. Fernandez, get your ass in there. Oh, I swear to God. Baseball God just decided to all over me. Grand slam. Oh yeah. Make me miss the playoffs with a first ranked team. Year two, 30 games above 500. No divisional win. Trip to the wild card. First inning.